Hello again, everybody. It's Jerry Slater for Your Town at Work, and we have a very special show today. We are highlighting some of the most powerful ladies of Town Hall, and truly the women who run run the town. So we're not going to say anything to our, our town manager or anybody else. It's going to be our little secret. But I am here with Kathy Carney, who is the contract administrator for the town yes, good of morning. Wood. Kathy, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So um, people see you. In fact, we were talking about we saw you in a PBC. I saw you in a PBCC meeting last night. Why don't we talk about you've been here 35 years, yes, correct? Yes, in June it will be 35 years. Congratulations, that's Thank great. You. Thank you. How did you come into the role? How, what got you into this? Um, it was really kind of a funny story. I was 22 years old and I was going to take the summer off from work. I was still living with my parents and they said, sure, you want to do that? And the job came up in the general manager's office for a clerk and I was told, go ahead, put it in. And I put it in, I got the job and I never did get that summer off. So <laughs> 35 years later and I'm still waiting to have a summer off. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to work at that. Yeah, but then from there, nine years later, um, the purchasing agent at the time, he le retired, and then I took over in the job. Okay, so kind of, and you know, I know you know where all the bodies are buried here in town <laughs> yeah. hall, what everybody right. does, and you really, you know, really, it's an interesting role, and mm -hmm. we'll get a little bit more into it. But as contract administrator, main part of your role? My main part is really overseeing the contracts, putting the bids out, and a lot of people don't know that in public purchasing there are about seven or eight procurement laws that we really have to follow. So you really have to be a law kind of person, legal person. And um, so I put the bids out, make sure that they, they meet the requirements, and then do contract administration. So I make sure that the contract is doing what he's supposed to do, the job gets done at the price that it's supposed to get done. So. Pretty much everything has to go out to bid, or, or is it? No, there are thresholds, and it depends on what you're buying. So if you're buying a supplier service, that's under Chapter 30B, so the limit there is $10,000 for written quotes. But usually the departments come through me, and we figure out what do you want, have a scope of work, and then get the quotes in. And then anything $50,000 or more for supplies or service has to go up for skilled bids. Construction is a different law, and construction usually starts at $50,000 and then goes up to $150,000, and then different laws after that. So really, you end up having to have a good legal knowledge right. in order to do the public construction and public bid laws. How do you keep up on that? Because they're, they're, they're changing, right? They change all the time. And what they like to call, the last change was called Municipal Modernization Act. And what it did is just put more responsibilities on the purchasing agent. And they try, the legislature writes these laws, and most of them don't know anything about public procurement. But they say it would be great if instead of advertising in one place or your bid page, you advertise in four or five different places. And there's different dollar amounts and different limits. You have to do it two weeks before a bid opening. So they, there are a lot of laws that really kick in. And so what I do is I'm certified as a public purchasing official with the state and you have to take classes and you have to take tests at the end of each class and with purchasing agents or um, public purchasing officials you have to um, do it through the state where most other organizations they do it through their association right. public purchasing is actually through the state through the um, inspector general's office so not only do you have to know it for your job but you have to make sure that you pass all the tests there are three step separate tests, and then you also have to keep up with your continuing ed. So, and, and you've got to obviously keep us out of trouble, too, mm -hmm. because yes. um, that's, a, you know, especially with some of the high profile mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really key. That's really what I see my job. And also, as, as we maybe add more staff or we're able to do more things, is to try to get the prices down on a lot of our items and do cooperative purchasing, which we do some now. But mostly it's to keep the town from having bid protests, which can stop a project. So in the 35 years I've been here, I think we've had four bid protests and I've lost only one. That's great. And when you lose it, what ends up happening is you, uh, the inspector general or the attorney general's office tells you you didn't quite do it right, either cancel the bid, go out again, or award to another bidder. So, you know, we usually don't end up, we've, it's never been a case where we've had to pay any money in a lawsuit or anything like that. It's more on process. They want to make sure that it's a level playing field for everybody. So that's what my job is, too, to make sure somebody hires the best responsive company to do the work for the town. 
And, and you know, and I know from um, full disclosure, um, NCM recently went yes. through this yes. process mm -hmm. for the Senior Center Garage, mm -hmm. which was, was quite interesting. So you have to, it's a step-by-step -step and you can't miss It is. Anything. Yeah, you have to make sure that you have, you've done everything that the law says. And, and in the case of this, where we were leasing out some of our property, there's a whole different set of laws and requirements and how long things have to be advertised. So for me as a contract administrator, I have to know what you want to do, what law has to be used to do it, what threshold limits are, and then making sure that the money is there and that we're in budget. So there's many steps to it. People think, oh, well, that road construction project right there, we just hired a contractor. Well, no, it, there was a beginning phase with meeting with the department all the way through contract administration. Right. And I know there's a, a lot of times there's a bid meeting in the beginning where you're educating people mm -hmm. on just everything you have to do with the process yes. too. Yep. So there's just a, a lot of facets to this. I got to ask you, 35 years, what was the most interesting RFP, interesting bid that you had? It's got to be. I, I, I have to say it's probably the one that we're out there right now, which is the sale of the safety bug the the um, safety <laughs> yes. officer, the Volkswagen. There's been a lot of talk on now and now about what's going on with it, and they haven't used it in quite a few years. So I got an email from the chief of police saying, hey, we've got the safety bug and what do we do? So again, there were steps. They had to declare it surplus or send it to the selectmen to declare it surplus. And then I had to figure out what a value was. Now, some people probably thought, oh, great, $500, I can make this really, you know, have a good deal. And instead, researching to see what the value of a 1967 Volkswagen might be, mm -hmm. we put it out there for $4,000, and we're up to $7,100 now on Minisabit. Wow. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get it up there. So anybody out there, if you want to buy a, a Volkswagen, <laughs> it's municipid.com, and you can put your bid in. It's sealed bids. I don't see who the bidder is or anything. And then next Thursday, I'll get an email that says the successful bidder has been so-and-so. So, well, you know, Father's Day is coming up, folks. So, um, <laughs> I mean, nothing says I love you more than having that. And, and it comes it, complete with a hat, too. There you go. Yes. Right. The, the, the bug has a hat. It has. I was told at one point, somebody years ago, somebody stole the hat and they had to get a new hat put on there. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's probably the most interesting. I've done all of the building constructions just about that's here now. So um, I work with the PBC, but I've done the public safety building and the DPW and the high school was a huge project. This, the new right. garage that NTM is in, that there. Um, we're working now in the light department on Access Road. So again, my whole purpose in that was to make sure that all the laws were followed, that we did things responsibly in the way that the law was requiring us. Now you have another aspect to your to your role also, which is really kind of kind of bleeding it a little bit, shall we say? <laughs> and because you're you're basically like the facilities manager for uh, for building. general government, yeah. a lot of the departments. Although we have a building manager at every building, they'll come to me when they have a project. And since I'm the contract administrator anyway, I get involved with it and finding the what we need to do, getting a scope of work, hiring designers to help us out with the projects. And then, oh, my air conditioning isn't working. Okay, let's make sure that we get it up and working. So I'm doing that. Um, I also work with the budgets with the town manager, the assistant town manager, the finance director. So that's why I'm sitting up front at town meeting all the time to have any additional information that they might need. So I've got really three different aspects of my job. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing amount of information that you need to know. Mm -hmm. And I know that there, anybody who watches town meeting, um, any of us are political geeks in town, <laughs> know that there's always going to be the signal for Kathy Carney mm -hmm. to, to come up to the room. Yeah. Let's, let me, let's kind of take a, a, a step to the side here a little bit. And, and how about a little bit about you? Um, now, I believe you don't live in Norwood. I don't now. No, um, okay. I was born and raised in Norwood, graduated class of 79, Norwood High School, and um, lived in Norwood for a while, and now I live in Walpole. Okay. Um, I'm married. I have a 13-year-old daughter, who Liv, who's over at St. Catharines, seventh grade, so we're going through the middle school angst kind of thing. Um, yeah. This is, and I know that um, it's funny that uh, you, your daughter really kind of is is a is a, a Norwood um, just St. Catharines, mm -hmm. but you know is fascinated. We've talked about she's yes. fascinated by the high school and that seems yes. like that. Oh yeah, so. she even though we're from Norwood, she thinks of I'm um, sorry, we live in Walpole. She thinks of Norwood as her hometown. Yeah. She does just about everything in Norwood. Yeah. And what do you and your family like to do when you're not working? 
We know you don't take, take yeah. out the summer off. <laughs> yeah, you never get the summer off. Um, I like to travel. We like to go different places. Um, years ago, we used to go to Colorado every year, my husband and I. Um, mostly gardening. I find a, I'll get a lot of relaxation with my gardening, and we have a beautiful yard and swimming pool and everything. And um, probably that's about it. We're kind of home buddies. Um, my daughter loves to travel, so I've got to make sure that I, I get her someplace every year. But other than that, kind of sticking around the house, really big into animals. We have four cats and a three-legged Great Dane. Wow. Yes. So. Yep. And they're all rescued animals. And the Great Dane, That's when great. we got her, they told us that we got her at three months, and they told her that she was a lab black lab and then she kept then as we signed paperwork they said well she might have some great dane and she'd like clifford the dog she just kept growing and growing <laughs> and now she's a big dog but and she's a sweetie and the three cats get along with their dog the four cats four cats oh yeah four okay, cats okay. yep and the, our latest addition from a couple of years ago was found in Mo mount hope cemetery in mm -hmm. roslindale so yeah. her name's rosie because i mean oh, what can you do okay. if she's bo found in roslindale but they all get along yeah really well super mm -hmm. All right, so we talked about looking looking ahead. There's still time, well, although when this airs, probably the bug will be gone. Yep. Um, but many facets of your role mm -hmm. as contract administrator. Did we miss anything? Um, I also oversee a project called The Gift of Warmth, which is donations made by residents and businesses in Norway to help people who have difficulty paying their heating bill or their electric bill. So um, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So I oversee that part of it as well. and sort of anything, any investigations, any analysis of budgets, people when we get ready for town meeting, people who are looking for funds, you know, to transfer internally, I try to look at their budgets and um, try to estimate how much other departments going to need, what, where can we find funds to help fund some of the projects. Super. Yeah. All right. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for joining us thank you. today. Thank you for having me. And um, again, you know, we're, we're here highlighting the women of Town Hall. So with that in mind, we'll be right back with Mary Lou Fallen, Town Clerk. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Once I uh, finish work, I usually meet with the general manager in the afternoon, uh, go over any outstanding topics or concerns that I have on any issues that are pending, do some little additional research, go home, walk my dog, relax a little bit, and come back uh, in the evening for the selectors meeting starting at 7 o'clock. People are able to come and discuss issues with us. We have those appointments usually at the beginning of the meeting. Also, if we ha as a licensing board, if we have any public hearings, we have to have like an issue of no liquor license or anything like that. They usually typically at the beginning of the meeting. Then we go into what we call, I call opening the mail, correspondence and different uh, information that we receive and whether we need to take any action on those or simply file them because they're nothing more than information. Then we listen to any uh, report from the general manager and updates he might have for us on events that he's been responsible for and are happening in town. And then each selectman will bring up their own agenda, things that are on their mind, what they think the board should be looking at in the future. Mother's first cousin was Ed Muskie, who was senator from Maine. He uh, became a vice presidential candidate, became shortly, for a short time, a presidential candidate. Was uh, secretary of state at the end of Jimmy Carter's administration. And when he was in the Senate, he was sent home, back to Maine, a, a document that they called uh, letters to Maine and it was all about what was going on in Washington, what his positions were and we used to get a copy of that and I would review that with my father, go over things and then in high school I was in an American history class and the teacher said a town meeting was coming up in Norwood and wanted somebody to go and attend the meeting and come back and report what it was all about to the class so I somehow raised my hand and went and I went back to the class and I reported that it was a bunch of grown ups standing around screaming at each other and I haven't missed a town meeting since. <laughs> Pretty much the same. <laughs> my uh, son Bill served on the school committee for some time. My son Brian, just this past spring, was elected to the uh, Board of Selectmen in the town of Uxbridge. And my son James, James who uh, is residing down in Nashville, is now uh, seriously contemplating a run for city council down there. So it's in the blood. 
Six children, all grown adults. I mentioned a few of them. We have 16 grandchildren, wonderful grandchildren. Thank God everyone's healthy and doing well. Um, two of them are currently serving in the Marines. Uh, Josh is just finishing up his first tour, four-year tour. And uh, Colin is just now in basic training and will be going on a special training uh, in a few weeks. So uh, we're very proud of them. Well, my father, yeah, I think that's a standard answer, but it's true. He was a very hard worker, had his own business, small local businesses, which I eventually took over from him. And um, just the way he was always about family and yet concentrating on his work responsibilities and being a success. So um, he was definitely uh, played a big role. It was a 1961 Cadillac Fleetwood. My father sent me down to Norwood Cadillac that used to be on Central Street. And he sent me down to make a deal with old Kyle Johnson who owned the dealership himself. And he sold me a 1961 Cadillac Fleetwood. Afterwards, as I grew older, I think my father probably arranged all that. But he made me go down and negotiate, and make that deal and, and buy that car. Although I think that was already prearranged. That Kyle was gonna lead me to that car. <laughs> experience. Yes. Walking my dog, Wilson. Uh, you know, he's my, my four-legged best friend, and uh, we spend a lot of time together, like I say, four times a day. We go out five in the morning, 11.30 in the afternoon, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then in the evening, depending on when I have a meeting or not. And uh, we just like to go out, and it's nice and quiet, and he's a golden retriever. He's eight years old. He's peaceful as can be, so he's not even on a leash. We just walk, and we both have a good time. That's that's probably when I escape and have my, my downtime. To care about people around you, to uh, always be responsible, maybe, uh, you know, think about being part of something bigger than yourself, and uh, enjoy life. <laughs>
and then I got married and I had my son and um, I left it was too much of a hike going up to Waltham every day so and then I just um, was aware of a position that was open in the town clerk's office and I called and I've been here ever since and the rest was history <laughs> <right>? exactly <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. So, you know, going from that kind of transition, and I just love it, um, Jack Tolman, you know, he's like, the headline is clerk to town clerk. <laughs> and you see there's a big retailer now that's mm -hmm. doing a lot of these commercials about how somebody starts as a cashier. Right. And now they're, and, move out. Um, and it right. is uh, um, World Women's Month, too, uh -huh. so it's a, yeah. it's a great story. But how has... How are things changed now that you are the town clerk? Um, it's changed. Well, now I'm in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing the job for quite a while and stuff, you know, and I'm pretty comfortable with it. Not, you know, I mean, the laws are changing all the time, especially election laws. They're changing all the time. So I have to keep up with those all the time. Uh, we are now on a births and deaths um, on a VIP system from the state. So that's changed quite a bit. We get all our records from the state and they go directly into the state when we process them and stuff. So that's changed quite a bit as opposed to when they were handwritten by the funeral director or the hospital or you know, whatever. So that's changed quite a bit and that's coming up into the new century. Um, and you know, you're just keeping up with the daily stuff and now I'm in getting into budgets every day and you know, Keeping track of my budget. <laughs> right. Yeah, you got to watch out for the yeah, account, right. right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and, the, and the town accountant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you learn something different every day. But I'll tell you, once you deal with something, you never forget it. Because it might come up 10 or 12 years later, and you'll say, oh, yeah, remember that when that happened? So, <laughs> you, know? I, I, you know, another thing, and I love the fact that you said, now I'm in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone who knows Mary Lou well, knows I, that's such a, a, an un-Mary Lou <laughs> thing to say. Well, but, the thing was, before, like, if something went wrong, I always had either Tom to back up to or Bob to back up right. to. So they were at my back. Yeah. <laughs> but now, now yeah. it's like... I don't have that anymore. <laughs> so yeah. you're 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 sitting on stage now for town meeting. Correct. What's that yeah. like? It, it was fine. You know, it was fine. It's, um, you know, just taking the meetings. It's, you know, you, it's it's interesting to listen to everybody back and forth and back and forth and stuff. You know, that's interesting and stuff. So yeah, it's I like it. So far. <laughs> Luckily, it was only a one night meeting. I don't know what May is going to be like. Yeah. Well, <laughs> April and May, but. Exactly. But um, it was, um, yeah, it's fine. I think I'll do fine up there, I hope, anyways. No, I think as long as and, nobody and asks me any questions. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, I think if it's, a, if it's just like the special or something and there's no money involved, I right. think they should let you sit by yourself. Yeah. You don't need to have <laughs> yeah. Tom with yeah, you. And, and, exactly. and hopefully Tom will watch this and see that. Yeah. Now, you're also participating in the town manager has a leadership meeting. Correct. Correct. Yeah, right. he has a department head meeting every Tuesday. Yep. And okay. we just kind of come in and... Um, you know, go through a lot of things. We, um, you know, things that are going on in the town, and and then we each go around and tell what's going on in our departments. And that's it's pretty. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, Good. every Tuesday we have that. Every Tuesday morning. Good. So, yeah. so talk a little bit about the office. You know, upstairs, and it is is funny. Now you're in charge, so you've right. got to deal with budget things and. Um, you know, you were probably doing a lot of the hiring before and right, stuff like right. that. Right, right. I have three wonderful women that work for me and stuff. And then we just moved into a new, we moved, we swapped sides in our office and stuff. We were in the smaller part before where the counter was out in front. So um, we came up with the idea of swapping sides. So the accounting area is now in where we used to be. So, and we have a much bigger area we cleaned out and... The women I work that I have working for me are wonderful. You know, they I believe in cross training everybody in my department, so everybody knows everything. And so if I'm not there, you know, if something comes up, because we're always dealing with different departments every single day, and it's um, you know, and I just believe in cross training. And the women I have working for me now are wonderful. They're, you know, they know how to do just about everything. So if I'm not there, I feel comfortable that if something went wrong, I. I would be fine, right. you know, our department would be fine. That's important. And it's just, you know, and like I said, I'm learning about the budgets more and more and stuff, and, and that was kind of new for me, you know, and stuff. I didn't really have a lot of hands-on on that stuff, and that's interesting. And then we're going into the new Muni system, so I'm looking right. forward to, you know, yeah. learning that and stuff, so. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, for things like, like you know, you talked about this a little bit before when you, you know, kind of went up the ranks. So, licenses. What types of licenses would someone come to your office for? Well, we handle together with the selectman's office, um, we issue all the um, common victual licenses, automatic amusements. The licensing authority is the selectman's office, so it comes starts from there. But in the fall, we get everything ready and we basically print all the licenses off and the money gets taken in our office. They collect, we collect the money for all the licenses and stuff. So it's common victualer and um, um, automatic amusement, car dealer licenses and all that. That's that's from the selection part of it. Marriage, you know, we crosses all the births, deaths, marriage um, licenses, and um, dog licenses. You know, we're in the midst of our census now, so it's, even though that's not a license, but that's a yearly thing that we send out that we're trying to collect, right. things like so that. I noticed the box out. To right, drop your, 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 yeah, your, we're in the midst of doing that. Anybody that hasn't sent their census back, please do so, because we're trying to finish up with that, and that's how we um, generate our street list that goes out every year. So, you, you've been doing this, you've seen a lot in, in the town. What's, what's the biggest change that you've seen in, in your office? Um, I, I think just keep it up with the laws every day and I, I don't consider things a big change, you know, and stuff. Just trying to keep up with everything, the daily routines and trying to keep up with all the election laws and all the vital statistics, anything that changes there and stuff, you know, and everything's getting more computerized, um, more online and, you know, things like that. That's been a big change, especially with the vitals, births, and deaths. That was a huge change. And, but, you know, it's easy, very easy, much, much easier, actually. I just think of it as daily routine, you know, to me, it's, it's not a big change. You know, you know, just like early voting was a big change. That was a big change because there was a lot of planning you know, and stuff, and like I said, the staff I had was wonderful and stuff. And the first year we did it, we did one week upstairs and then we moved out to Memorial Hall. And then the second year, we, the last year we did it, we did it all in Memorial Hall, which much easier, much, much easier. So maybe the next time we might look into more electronic, we've heard about poll pads that are coming out mm. that people have said it's been very, very easy to do with early voting. So we might look into that next year, you know, awesome. if I have enough money in my budget. <laughs> Right. All right. Good luck with that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm being watched very closely. <laughs> last, last question for you, Mary Lou. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the job. You mm -hmm. mentioned a little bit about your family in the mm -hmm. beginning. You're, you're a townie, right? I am a townie. Yeah. I am. Born, brought up, never moved out. <laughs> Still so, live here. Okay. I live in my grandfather's house that he oh, wow. lived in. Yeah, on Nickel Street and. um so we bought, when Franny and I first got married, my, um, my grandfather had died, so my mother and my aunt offered it to me. So we bought the house and we've been there ever since. Oh, wow. my, and I've been working here since my son was um, 10 months old. So and now he's 30, <laughs> going on 31. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One thing about Mary Lou, the person that folks may not know. I don't like being in front of the camera. <laughs> I'm camera shy, but <laughs> but I'm getting better at it. It's a little bit better at it, but I just like being. I don't like being in the limelight. I just like to sit back and, you know, when people need me, I'll help them out and stuff. But I don't. This is the same woman who said I'm in charge now yeah. earlier in this interview. I just want to point that out. I know, but that's fair, and yeah. we we are so happy that you agreed to Thank do you. this with. Mary Lou, this is Thank you. I actually the it. second time that you've recently right. that um, yeah that I did a blurb about the election exactly. a little while ago. Exactly. Yeah. So, so. Um, we're going to get you in front of the camera <laughs> more and more because we love to talk to you. No, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate thank it. Thank and you. I um I appreciate you you know having me here and you know it's it's been fun. It really has. It's you know it's been an interesting first year and but like I said, not a big change. Because Super. I've been doing it for so long. Super. So. Well, once again, you're, you're a jewel for our town. <laughs> Thank and you. I appreciate we, that. We really appreciate it. Yeah. This town has a lot of great people. A lot of, a lot of great people. A as you know, <laughs> a lot of great people. Super. Yeah. All right. So from Town Hall, I'm Jerry Slater. <laughs>